Welcome to the last technical lecture of the series. This is number 10. Um, we have covered a lot of ground, we've covered a lot of software, a lot of techniques using those different softwares and hopefully you now have an awareness of the interoperability to develop your own, um, th that can help you develop your own um, personal signature or visual style, uh, especially for those of you that aren't really, really strong drawers at the moment. Um, it's always nice to be able to think laterally about how you're going to approach a particular scenario. Um, so today, what I want to do, it's actually titled Introduction to Advanced Modeling, and what we'll do is we'll go through some of the more advanced capabilities of 3D Studio Max, some of the uh, in s specifically relating to the modifiers so that you can actually really start to customize a lot of these um, mesh objects that you create. Um, we might do some importing and exporting of geometry. Uh, again, we'll go over those kind of things. And um, I guess just the last little point to make is that even though you, we do go over some areas of the software, it is up to you to further through exploration your own understanding of what this is, what these softwares do. They are very vast. Um, I'm showing you some tools and techniques that are a little more common. Um, you know, for example, rendering. Rendering is a huge, huge area, um, and I believe that it's better for you to go and explore uh, through books and text how, how to actually um, render uh, in a style that you can appropriate to a particular design scenario. Um, so yeah, spend time, as much time as you can, experimenting with the software, making mistakes and finding out what works and what doesn't work. And, you know, as far as um, the internet goes, there's more than enough YouTube videos and how-to videos and um, written tutorials as to how things are done. Alright, so we'll jump into it. Okay, so before I go into um, the modeling or a lot of the modifiers that we can use to explore some of these more advanced techniques, uh, I came into 3D Studio Max and I've just created an assortment of geometry that falls under the extended primitives um, drop down. Uh, and I'll just go through, across some of these and introduce them to you. So in here we've got just the standard box, okay, which was one of the standard primitives. Um, and remember that in every single one of these we can go across to the modifier tab and by the parameters we can change it. And you can see I've meshed it up. By default it comes only in with one segment per side, but um, if we ever want to start to put more modifiers on these things we want to mesh them up a little bit more, which in turn will increase the amount of memory. Um, going back to the Create tab here, the first one that I've done is called a torus knot. Okay. Now, as in the case of everything with Max, we've got a visual interface. There's a button. There's a series of parameters that will change a piece of code or mathematical um, so, uh, a mathematical formula that works behind the visual interface to create something. In this case it will create the torus knot. Okay, so just with a click and a drag out and then to let go and not finish the command we can then um, change another parameter and then once we're finished we'll click for a second time. Okay, so once we've created something like that I'll go back to the original that I've created and go over to the modified tab we can change the overall radius of the, the object. Uh, there's a few different varieties, so a few different um, ways of doing the knot. And then we can also alter the, the cross section as well. Okay, so the next one is a prism shape, all right, which kind of gives a nice idea of kind of this fake perspective and each of the side lengths we can change. So it's creating a triangular shape with a height, but the parameters are probably different to um, 
other variations where we can actually change the overriding shape by length and not so much by angle between or another um, parameter that could have been specified. The chamfered box uh, gives you a fillet option so it's just a little bit different than the standard box. We head over to the chamfered box you can see that we can change the depth of that we can change the height and the width and the length and then how many segments it actually creates. So if we take it all the way down to one fillet segment you can see that we've given quite a sharp edge to that which has a completely different aesthetic. Otherwise we can mesh that right up like so. The next one moving along is a variation on the sphere. It's kind of a capsule and when you create it it um, occurs like this. So we've got this filler, uh, sorry, we've got the sphere. Uh, we let go of the mouse button and then it will give us a height parameter. Okay. Quite simple to use. Um, and then we can mesh it up. And again, if you take the mesh all the way down, you've got quite a, um, a low interpolation of uh, sides, which makes it quite angular. And we can um, add height segments as we need. The next one's called ring wave, which gives you this odd shape. Now this is probably the first introduction you have had into animation or at least this animation bar in the bottom. This piece of geometry, this extended primitive, has a, a shape on the inside that has a parameter that associates with um, animation. So one of the core uses of 3D Studio Max is to generate not only still images but animations. And you will explore this further on in your um, studies if you take the uh, appropriate units. We've got um, particular parameters that alter the static form of this, I guess, in a static form. And then as you go down, we've got a whole heap of other ones that when you press play on the animation toolbar will move the, um, the vector points that generate these meshes in a particular way. Okay, So it kind of gyrates. So worth having a look at that. Um, and as far as animation goes, uh, it'll have to be something for another time. Um, but it's it's quite a simple concept. You set up a series of uh, keyframes along a designated timeline, which by default is four seconds long, or a hundred frames, so 25 frames in a, every second. And then by hitting play, it'll generate a um, a frame for each one of, you know, a, a single frame and those will then be uh, composited together and you will be able to generate an animation. Okay, so the last one's this spindle shape. Again, very similar to the capsule but with a sharp edge or sharp head on it and we can specify that. You can actually make it really sharp, give it different heights, give it different radii and alter the number of segments that make it up. We can also, if we take edged faces off now, there's some options within these that will either keep it as a smooth object when it renders, or a, um, I think, a, a hardened surface. Okay, so it actually uh, visually represents the faceted um, com uh, makeup of the mesh.